Hello and welcome to The John Ark Show. On today's episode, we're going to interview film producer and investigative journalist Bart Sebrel, who believes the U.S. government never put a man on the moon and that the moon landings were all faked at a movie studio built on a U.S. military base. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel for free. You can also like, comment, and follow us. We're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so make sure to click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. Also, we ask that you post a link to today's show on all your social media to help get the word out. Now, let's say hello to Bart Sebro. Hello, Bart. Welcome to The John Ark Show. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Really good. Thank you. Bart, you've written a book called Moon Man, the true story of a filmmaker on the CIA hit list. You've also produced a documentary called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon on a subject alleging that the moon landings were faked. Tell me what first caused you to believe uh, that they were, in fact, fake. Well, like everybody else, I grew up believing that they were real. In fact, I considered myself the biggest fan of the moon landing. My father was an officer in the Air Force, and uh, I was four years old asleep in bed at the time they allegedly went to the moon. And he got a VIP package of nine by 12 color prints, about 20 of them, gave them to me. They were my most cherished possession for the first 20 years of my life. I had them up on my bedroom wall every day, seeing them uh, up until about the age of 14. I had uh, watched a gentleman who worked as a contractor for NASA during the time of Apollo, confessed that he saw an interdepartmental memo that was classified between Von Braun and a general at the Pentagon saying that the likelihood of going to the moon on the first attempt with 1960s technology was one in 10,000, meaning more than likely the crew would be killed attempting to do so. This is why they basically faked it in order to guarantee the success of the mission. I mean, all you have to do is realize the absurdity of the claim this way. Today, with our current technology, they can only travel with an astronaut one thousandth the distance to the moon. Yet they're claiming with five decades older technology, with one millionth the computing power of a cell phone, they went a thousand times farther then their best equipment, which is five decades newer, can send them today. So seeing how it's impossible for technology to go backwards, we know from that simple deduction that they didn't go. Kind of put a seed in the back of my mind. Another 10 years go by. I'm 24 years of age. I'm a filmmaker. And I was editing a video one day for the guy who produced the program with the NASA contractor on it 10 years earlier. He put me in touch with him and he suggested that I do a documentary about it. So before I agreed, I did about six months worth of research. I found out that two of the three astronauts from the first you know, important mission never talk about it publicly, which seems kind of strange. The administrator of NASA resigned days before the first Apollo mission, before he could add this great feather to his cap, and that the Soviets were five times more advanced in space travel than we were. And suddenly we leaped ahead and in only eight years, you know, did something we can't even do today. In fact, the Chinese, which is the most industrialized nation on earth, they say it's going to take 20 years from today to put a man on the moon. So how can we do it in, you know, a half to a third of the time or two thirds of the time, uh, you know, with five decades older technology, it doesn't make any sense. So you also say that NASA destroyed all the original blueprints, plans, photographs, and videotape of the trips to the moon. That always struck me as very unusual. Was it, uh, what is NASA's explanation for destroying all of that original material, the blueprints, the videos? Uh, did they just run out of file cabinet space? What happened? Well, they admit that they did destroy all the hardware, all the schematics, all the telemetry, and all the original videotapes. They admit it. They have given no explanation for that. It makes no sense. I mean, in today's dollars, the Apollo equipment cost $200 billion. So that would be like Bill Gates spending $200 billion to make the first computer. Hey, it works great. And then when he's done, he throws all of the equipment and the schematics and the blueprints into the furnace. No one would ever do that. Yeah. You know, maybe they should have done that with the atomic bomb, but the fact is they didn't. 
So destroying all of the original documentation is actually proof of the fraud, because if you really went to the moon and spent $200 billion investment, you would never destroy that equipment in case you needed to do it again. The fact that they did destroy all the evidence of the missions is proof of the fraud, because that's exactly what they would do to cover up shenanigans when if they really went, they would never destroy all of that equipment and blueprints and original videotapes. Do you know what year they claim to have destroyed it in? Well, they probably did it soon after. It wasn't discovered that they had done so until basically uh, around the year 2000. I discovered they destroyed all the original uh, videotapes and a colleague of mine doing his own film about the moon landing fraud discovered that they had destroyed all the original telemetry. So is it true that IMAX wanted access to the original video of the moonshot so they can improve the quality by 600% and NASA said, no, we don't have it. And also, did NASA also lose the video from all the previous programs like Mercury and Gemini? Or was it just the moonshot video that disappeared? Well, because Mercury and Gemini were genuine orbital flights, uh, they had no need to do, to lose the originals. It's only the fake so the, stuff. So the video still exists of Mercury and Gemini? As far as I know, they do. Okay. Uh, I mean, today, with our best technology, okay, we can only go 250 miles above the Earth. That's it. And so anything beyond that, uh, they faked. And so a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. I actually discovered unedited footage from the Apollo mission. Everything that everyone had seen before was pre-edited by NASA. I asked for unedited footage and I got only one reel, I believe by mistake, or Bill Casey, the NASA whistleblower, believes they sent it to me intentionally. You pop in this tape, it says right on the screen, do not show to the public. And it's unedited footage for an hour of one particular shot of the mission that they only showed 20 seconds of. It's of a little, you know, blue earth with black all around it to demonstrate, hey, here we are far away from the earth. When in fact, that little blue earth was a one foot model. So you say that one of the reasons we cannot send astronauts to the moon was because of the Van Allen uh, radiation belt. Uh, you, know, you claim that that would kill them. Um, do you know of any high profile uh, scientists or experts who can corroborate that claim? Yeah, I don't claim it would kill them. NASA said so themselves. Kelly Smith made a video in 2016 about the Orion Project. The Orion Project, you know, with five decades better technology, said in 2016 that they were going to have an unmanned probe orbit the moon in 2018. They couldn't even do that. What they could do is send an unmanned probe up 3,000 miles into the middle of this radiation belt. Now, most people don't realize, but every manned space mission has been below this radiation belt except going to the moon. They'd have to go through it. So they sent up a spacecraft into the radiation with two Geiger counters, and it came back down. And this guy in his 20s did a video for NASA, which I guess they, you know, let slide through because it was a NASA video. And the guy says, word for word, the radiation is lethal. And then he says, the technology to protect astronauts from going through it has yet to be invented in what year was that he made that video in 2016 it's kelly smith so as a journalist i call up nasa i say hey let me talk to this guy <laughs> i think he's on to something and they say oh he didn't give interviews anymore since he put his foot in his mouth i'm like oh okay i said well seeing how these are you know non-military missions going up to measure a part of nature you know can i please have those two geiger counter readings and then they say something very strange they said, well, those Geiger counter readings are a national secret. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, well, wait a minute. When you send a probe to the sun to find out how much hydrogen is in the atmosphere, that's not a military secret. It's just nature. When you send a probe to Jupiter to find out how much helium is in the atmosphere, that's not a secret. That's just part of nature. So why would the amount of radiation in the radiation belt that's 25,000 miles thick that you'd have to travel through to reach the moon why would that information of nature be a military secret? 
but it is because it would prove that the moon landings were fraudulent because there's no way to go through that and survive because the guy admitted, the NASA admitted the technology to protect you from going through the radiation to survive that much radiation has yet to be invented. So nope. how could they possibly have gone to the moon? Oops. So Elon Musk is known for hiring some of the best engineers in the world. He also works very closely with the NASA people. How do you think Elon Musk will be able to get his uh, astronauts to the moon and to Mars uh, with this radiation problem? Are, are you saying that you don't think Elon Musk is aware of the radiation uh, problem? Oh, no, he's aware of it. He, in fact, has uh, a copy of my book. And he knew prior to even getting the book that they couldn't go to the moon. They didn't go to the moon. I'm not sure what he's up to. He seems to be, uh, a, comparatively to most, an honorable person. So he must be, you know, being wise with what he says and how he says it in order to use that to his advantage. Uh, as long as he does that in an ethical way, I don't have a problem with it. He definitely knows. You so know, if, claiming, he know, if, if he knows that, why spend billions of dollars on ships to go to the moon and to Mars? Well, it doesn't they, make any sense. Well, it does, because the man who told me first that they didn't go to the moon, who was there at the time, he said it's all because of the money. I mean, come on. In today's dollars, a moon rover cost $100 million. It has fewer parts than a Jeep. It's all about getting money from the taxpayers and spending it on their secret projects. That's, you know, what they're doing. Maybe he sincerely hopes to travel to the moon someday or to sincerely go to Mars someday. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. He's, if he's aware of it, then he's spending most of his life pursuing something that cannot be achieved. And that's well, how, really, that. uh, given, given how rational and reasonable Elon is, that seems highly unlikely. Well, no, it's not that it can't be achieved. It's that it has yet to be achieved. And so Von Braun told us plainly how you could go to the moon. He published it in the late 1950s. We bought it at auction for tens of thousands of dollars. His original documentation, which is in the book Moon Man and is also in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. Actually, it, it's an astronaut's gone wild. Let me make that correction. He said in order to reach the moon and one rocket, the rocket would have to be 10 times the weight of the Queen Mary or weigh 800,000 tons. The Saturn V rocket weighed 2,500 tons. That's a difference of about 30,000%. He then said you would have to ferry fuel to a space station, which was only built, you know, completed in the 21st century. And from there, you could go to the moon. And then once you landed, you would have to go into a cave because the moon is hit probably a million times per second by meteorites the size of a grain of sand that are traveling at 25,000 miles an hour. Let me ask you this. During the time of the Apollo program, did either the Russians or the Chinese have ground-based radar systems that could track one of our rockets all the way to the moon and back? Or Absolutely. Did they they Absolutely. Did. That's why they destroyed the telemetry data. I mean, the telemetry data, okay, that's the computer data as to where the spacecraft is, how fast it's going, and, you know, probably in their fuel I, consumption. Uh, and stuff I, like I, that. Understand, now, I understand. But why didn't the Russians or the Chinese immediately say, our radars indicate that this ship never went all the way to the moon? Why didn't they release yeah. that publicly? I'll tell you, but for first, let me tell you that Gene Krantz admits that they destroyed deliberately all the telemetry data, which means he's saying they deliberately destroyed the proof that they went to the moon, which means they didn't go to the moon. Otherwise, they wouldn't destroy it. Now, why did China, Israel, Japan, Russia not blow the whistle? Well, it's like saying I have a picture of a president with a prostitute. Okay, I could release that to the press and I could ruin that president or I could blackmail them year after year after year. And that's got to be the reason why. I mean, China teaches in high school and in college that the moon landings are fake. Why they don't call us on it? Because they're they're negotiating, you know. These, these you know, countries aren't our enemies. China and Russia have no interest whatsoever in taking over the continental United States. Now, they are competitors, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to beat them competitively. But 
we do a trillion, what, $3 trillion a trade or something with them on a regular basis. They're not going to, you know, bring down their favorite customer. They've all blackmailing one another. They're blackmailing us. And that's another good reason simply to tell the truth about it so that these, you know, competitive nations of ours can't be blackmailing us, which is what they're doing, which is a much more valuable use of the information than just giving it away free to the world. So you did another project called Astronauts Gone Wild in which you physically approached a number of astronauts who went to the moon and asked them to swear on the Bible that they actually went to the moon and a number of them physically assaulted you. Why do you believe these astronauts reacted so violently and did you ever file a police report charging them with assault and battery? Well, first of all, if I went to the moon and I really walked on the moon and someone thought that it was shot in a TV studio. I mean, I would find that hysterically funny. That would be like throwing a feather at me. I mean, why would I get mad if someone threw a feather at me? If, on the other hand, I was with my wife and someone came up and said, oh, your mistress says hello, boy, would that make me mad. And that's exactly how they reacted. In fact, when we were in Edgar Mitchell's house, who bills himself as some peace guru, not only did he threaten to shoot me, you know, threatened, uh, say he's not violent and then hit me five seconds later from behind and all that commotion, we left a very high quality wireless microphone on him. All this can be seen in astronauts gone wild. Then we take the camera outside. He's in his house with the doors closed. My cameraman puts the camera in the back seat of the rental car and forgets to stop recording, which means we're recording the private audio in the guy's house, right? So the, the production secretary calls me up frantic, like two months later, says, Bart, do you know what they're talking about in their house? I said, now tell me. She says, they're talking about calling the CIA to have you assassinated. And sure enough, they are. So if they really went to the moon, and I'm just some silly person who thinks otherwise, why would they have to call the CIA to have me assassinated? Now, Unless, did, of did course. You, did you ever take that audio to the police and file a, a complaint or an incident report? No. Uh, when I was punched by Buzz Aldrin, the police did come because the hotel was freaking out, you know, that there was this ruckus going on in front of their five star hotel. The police uh, came. They saw the tape of me being assaulted, you know, for free speech. And they said he's guilty of assault, but we're not going to prosecute him because we're not going to prosecute a national hero. What about, in the, what about in the first incident where you had the audio tape of them threatening to call the CIA on you? Why didn't you take that to the police? Eh, you know, the, the reason why I didn't prosecute Buzz Aldrin for clearly assaulting me. I mean, I could have sued him personally, probably for a quarter million dollars and gotten it. In fact, believe it or not, such an instance is in the Bible. Jesus said, when someone strikes you on one cheek, which is what he did, you are to forgive them and even offer them the other cheek. And that was the scripture that I said, look, I can't sue this guy, even though I can win. Christ said not to do such a thing. Bart, you also allege that the astronauts who died in the fire of Apollo 1 were deliberately killed by the government. Why would they do that? Well, I don't allege it. The dead man's widow alleges it. And the dead man's son, who was a 747 pilot, alleges it. I interviewed them each probably total about six hours. They have forensic evidence that the Apollo 1 fire, January 27th, 1967, that killed the crew that would have been the first crew on the moon, that that fire was set deliberately. The dead man told his wife the day before he died that the CIA was all over the launch pad for the first time in NASA's history. So the CIA suddenly appears at NASA, and the very next day, three people are dead, the commander of which was about to go to the press and confess that they were nowhere on target for going to the moon. He had already done that once before. He had an impromptu press conference weeks before where he invited in the media to the top of the rocket and hung a lemon the size of a grapefruit on top of it, saying that the thing was a lemon. In fact, his last words before they burned him alive was, gentlemen, you know, we can't talk between two buildings on a wired intercom and hear one another. He says, how are we going to get to the moon in two years if we can't talk between two buildings? And the next thing you know, he's dead. They just tried to destroy the spacecraft multiple times to get rid of the forensic evidence. And his widow and his son are 100% convinced that that fire was set deliberately. 
So the government keeps coming out every few years with the moon landings are great and all these anniversary things. I mean, if they really went to the moon, then anyone who says otherwise is a moron. So why are there thousands of videos taking tens of thousands of hours constantly trying to defend that the moon landings are real and criticizing people like me if they really went? Because they know that if the truth comes out about the moon landing fraud, even though it killed the fewest number of people, it's the one that's going to make the public the most outraged. And because, and then not only that, Then they'll ask, well, what about the Apollo 1 fire? So there are stories out there in the press about alien spacecraft and bases being allegedly seen on the moon. And some of the astronauts uh, have discussed some of these sightings with celebrities. Have you heard any of these stories? And if so, what did you think of them? Well, keep in mind, these astronauts didn't tell their wives that the moon landings were fake in order to protect them. And so Edgar Mitchell, for example, who says he walked on the moon when he did not, also says aliens are real, which means they're not. What do you think the real reason for them ending the moon program was? Well, you know, they, I think <laughs> even, even a bank robber knows when to cool it off, you know, for a while. They used to say after they rob a bank, you know, let's, let's go into hiding until the heat you know, blows away. So that basically it, they knew they were, you know, milking this money cow for about as long as they possibly could. In fact, after they went to the moon the second time, I mean, just the second time, I mean, okay. So they, they, they land on the moon. Allegedly all the world is watching six months later, they allegedly land on the moon again, which they didn't. And people are calling the networks complaining that reruns of I Love Lucy are being interrupted, right? Now, a, a lot of people worked uh, with NASA on the moon program, uh, an awful lot. Have any whistleblowers from those programs ever contacted you and provided you with sworn testimony or physical evidence or audio recordings proving that this program was faked? Well, yes. I mean, we have the chief of security at a military base where Apollo 11 was filmed. If you get a copy of Moon Man, just go to Sibrel, S-I-B-R-E-L dot com. You can get a copy of the book. He was there. He was chief of security at the military base where Apollo 11 was filmed June 1st, 2nd, 3rd of 1968. He gave us the code name for the project, the dates it was filmed, a list of 15 people who were on the VIP list who were allowed in to eyewitness it. And he stood beside President Johnson, who was there the first day that they filmed it. You know, one of the arguments that people who say, well, they couldn't have faked such a thing as the, you know, 100,000 people involved. That's like saying the teller of a bank and the CEO of the bank know what's really going on. No, the teller is oblivious. Even the, all those computer operators, I show, I show a segment of that, you know, seconds before they go to the moon, allegedly for the first time. And you got 30 people at, at Space Command just kicked back watching a TV monitor. I mean, like the rest of the world, a, a computer operator acknowledged afterwards that they could tell no difference whatsoever between a simulation and an actual flight. Let me ask you a hypothetical question. Let's say you got a call from the White House tomorrow and they say, Bart, we have a proposal for you. We'd like to invite you out to Area 51 and introduce you to our alien partners. We'll show you the technology that's more incredible than anything you've ever seen in any science fiction movie. But there's a catch. You have to sign a confidentiality agreement promising never to disclose any of this to the public. Would you sign such a document and agree to such an offer? Well, if it were genuine um, information, I'd be tempted to want to know what the truth is. Uh, but the interesting thing about UFOs is about, I don't know, you, you may know this, 10 to 20 years ago, there was actually a United States Press Club conference about this. I think it was like a three-hour interview. You can watch it on YouTube. And the top two UFO researchers, one from the United States, one from France, said something at the very end that is astonishing. They both independently concluded that, number one, UFOs are real, and number two, they're not from outer space. They think they're demonic. My personal opinion I'm sorry it may sound absurd, but I think they're probably fallen angels masquerading as as aliens. I mean, if if aliens land down in a spacecraft and if fallen angels have been around for thousands of years, then they have the technology to go underneath the ocean and a space 
craft that can fly out and go into the air. You think they're really going to tell the truth, seeing how their their leader is the father of lies that were really fallen angels, which would only motivate people to believe in God and repent? No, they're going to come up with some story. Hey, we're from this galaxy far, far away that can never be verified. So that's my opinion as to what, not, it's not really even my opinion as to what UFOs really are. It's the top two UFO researchers came to the very same conclusion. And because the UFO community wanted to believe in Star Trek and Star Wars, they actually kicked out the two leaders for telling the truth of the conclusion. Well, Bart, it's been more than 50 years since uh, we went to the moon. So I don't know if we'll ever know the complete truth about all of this, but it's really very interesting. A lot of the people involved have passed away. A lot of the evidence has been destroyed deliberately or otherwise. So, uh, you know, I don't know that we'll ever get a, a definitive answer to these questions. Before we go, where can people purchase your books and documentaries? Yeah, just go to Sibrel, S-I-B-R-E-L.com, and that'll take you to it. Bart, thank you for coming on the John Arc Show. I want to wish you all the best and uh, good luck to you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. You take care. Bye-bye.